Well, hi, boys and girls. Mr. Brian here with another story time. Um, we are working through our book, uh, The Promises of God Storybook Bible, and we have a couple great uh, lessons for you guys today. Um, we've been talking about the prophets, and um, the prophets were people that God chose to give the uh, give the, his people and the kings messages um, and, and so they would talk um, for God and so we are going to have a couple stories one from Isaiah and one from Jeremiah who was a different prophet um, but they had some uh, promises that they were making um, that they were uh, passing along from God and so we're going to go right into our story. God will take the punishment for the sins of all his people. I promise to suffer. If you were God and you could make anything happen, what would you do? Would you make it so that you could fly like the birds or eat any food you wanted? What if you were God and the people you had made had disobeyed you, hardened their hearts towards you over and over again, and were separated from you by their sin. Maybe you would want to just give up on them, destroy them all, and not ever make any more people. Or maybe you'd want to come and show them how spectacular you are so that they would want to do great things for you. That all sounds possible, right? And some of that is probably what God's people were expecting when Isaiah told them that God would come to earth. But Isaiah wasn't done telling them what was going to happen when God came to live as a man on earth. Isaiah told them that when God came, he would come to do one thing. And this was a thing he would do in a lot of different ways at a lot of different times. That one thing was to suffer. That's right, to suffer. Suffering means that he would feel the pain and hurt and that people would be mean to him. God wasn't going coming to, to be told how special he was, or to make sure everyone knew he had power that, had more power than anyone else. In fact, Isaiah told God's people that when God came, they would not accept him. God had already told Isaiah what was going to happen, and God knew that most of his people were not going to like someone who would suffer. They thought anyone who would suffer was weak. And they only wanted a God who was always who was always one in the same way that they thought counted. And here's a picture of Isaiah talking to the people about the one to suffer. Except God had made them a promise, and God knew how to keep it. God had promised that he would send someone who would crush the head of the snake, someone who would make his people have hearts that would love, hear, and obey him again. Well, remember how we talked about sacrifice and how a pure spotless lamb had to be sacrificed to make up people for the people's sin? Well, when that happened, the lamb suffered. The lamb suffered pain, and just like that, lamb suffered. God would have to suffer in all sorts of ways. He would have to do it <clears throat> to keep his promise and to be able to make his people have soft hearts that were connected to his again. But Isaiah didn't just tell them that God would suffer Isaiah, that God would suffer. Isaiah also told them that God would be victorious, that God would win, that God would make it so that it was like all sin was gone forever. This was amazing news, but the people didn't understand Isaiah because their hearts were still hard and because God hadn't come yet. They didn't listen to Isaiah and they continued wishing for God to do what they thought would be best, which was to send a powerful king who would make their lives safer and easier. Today we don't have prophets like Isaiah who tell us news from God. Instead we have the Bible, which tells us all God wants us to know. But sometimes we don't believe the Bible, just like God's people didn't believe Isaiah. That's why it's so important that you're learning these stories. The whole Bible shows us that God keeps his promises, 
and that those promises are possible because God came to suffer. Also, we can be free from the punishment of sin and instead have hearts that love God. And here we have a picture of the snake being crushed under the heel of the man. So we have some questions, and these are kind of, uh, could be difficult questions to answer, but no answer is a wrong answer, kids. What do you think that God, what do you think God should do with his people since they keep sinning? What do you think God should do when you sin? What is something God can do that you can't do? And what's the time when you suffered, and how did that make you feel? Well, those are good quest answers to the questions, kids. And um, we are going to go have some singing time now with Miss Laurelin. So. I will see you back in a few minutes um, with the next story um, to wrap up the, our, our profit section. So, see you when you get back. Bye. Hi everyone. Thanks for the story, Brian. Are you kids ready to praise God with our songs together? Let's get started. Love, love, love. Oh, love the Lord your God. Love, love. God said love is kind. God said love is patient. Love is kind. God said love is patient. God said love is kind. God said love is patient. Love is kind. Make yourself small and whisper. Love is patient. Love is kind. Sit up and clap your hands and say it. Love is patient. Love is kind. Raise you to the sky and sing it. Love is patient. Love is kind. God said love is patient, God said love is kind, God says love is patient, love is kind. God says love is patient, God says love is kind, God said love is patient, love is kind. Make yourself small and whisper, love is patient, love is kind. Sit up and clap your hands and say it, love is patient, love is kind. Reach up to the sky and sing it, love is patient, love is kind. Have your scarves ready? All right. Here's mine. Okay. You might see people do this with them. You know that's not what we're going to do. Here we go. 
This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine, let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Hide it under a bushel, no, I'm gonna let it shine. Hide it under a bushel, no, I'm gonna let it shine, let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Won't let Satan play it out. I'm gonna let it shine. Won't let Satan fade it out. I'm gonna let it shine, let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine, let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Good job. When I'm outside playing in the yard, I can talk to God, I can talk to God. When I'm inside resting in my bed, I can talk to God, I can talk to God. I can tell God all about my day, ask Him to help me to live in His way. Then I love you is what I say. Talk to God anytime. When I'm at home and I can't play with my friends, I can talk to God. I can talk to God. When I'm at home and I cannot go to church, I can talk to God. I can talk to God. I can tell God all about my day. Ask Him to help me to live in His way. Then I love you is what I. I can talk to God anytime. I can talk to God anytime. I can talk to God anytime. Well, let's get finished up. Here we go. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. kids. Great singing with Miss Laura Lynn. Thank you, Miss Laura Lynn, for uh, joining us and teaching us songs. Okay, we have one more story for today. Uh, this one is from the prophet Jeremiah. And God promised a new covenant with his people that would make a way for their sins to be forgiven forever. The new promise. Jeremiah was another prophet before there was a, the Bible to tell people what God wanted them to do and what God was going to do. He was a prophet to God's people at a time when they were being horribly disobedient to God. They were acting like other things were, were God and worship, worshiping them. They were doing horrible things to each other and they kept ha having very hard hearts that didn't listen to God. But God still loved them and he was still going to keep his promise to them. Remember how God had made a covenant with Abraham that he would make a people for himself and be their God forever? Remember how we learned that a covenant is a very special promise that is filled with love and can never be broken. Well, we've seen how God kept that promise he made to Abraham. From Abraham and Sarah's one baby Isaac, God made a whole people, thousands and thousands and thousands of them, and he had a plan for each of them just like he did for Joseph. And he protected them, at, protected them as a group, as he did from Pharaoh. He also kept his promise to bring them to the special land he had chosen for them. 
Remember God's promise in the garden about how he would make it so that his people's hearts would be made soft again and able to love, worship, and obey him? Well, the problem was that every time someone sins, it separates their hearts from God. It hardens it some. So even when God's people were obeying him by making sacrifices like he told them to do, the problem was never really fixed because they had to keep making the sacrifices over and over. More and more animals had to be killed because the people couldn't stop sinning. God saw this problem, but he had always but he had always had a plan. And Jeremiah was the one who got to give this new message to God's people. It was a message of a new covenant. Now you might expect a covenant about punishment because the people were being so bad. But it was the opposite. Here's pictures of the people being bad. And there's Jeremiah here. Jeremiah told people, Jeremiah told God's people that a time was coming when God was going to make a way for them to make a new covenant with him. In this covenant, God would make it so their sins would, could be forgiven once and for all, forever and ever and ever and ever. They wouldn't have to keep sacrificing over and over. Just like when Isaiah told the people about how God would suffer when he came as a human, the people once again didn't understand what Jeremiah told them about this new covenant. They also didn't know that this new covenant would not only be for the people who had been God's people, but it was going to be to make it so that anyone could be one of God's people. Jeremiah delivered the promise of the coming of the coming co covenant, but it wasn't actually time for the covenant to start yet. There was still a very important, very big sacrifice that had to be made before that covenant could happen, could begin. But God had promised it, and that means it definitely was going to happen. Okay, so here's our questions. What is a covenant? That's right, a covenant is a very special promise. And what was the very, what was the first covenant God made with Abraham? That's right. That God God was going to make Abraham the father of all of God's people. That he was going to be the first of God's people and have many many descendants. And what were some things? God's people were doing while Jeremiah was a prophet. That's right, they were being bad. They, they were worshipping the wrong things, they were being mean to each other. And what was the new covenant Jeremiah said was going to come? we wouldn't have to make sacrifices anymore that one big sacrifice would be made for for our sins and that we wouldn't have to do it over and over and over again every time we sinned right so kids this was fun I'm thankful that you were here today um, I pray that you will still be safe um, so we're gonna pray to God real quick before we uh, move on and say goodbye so bow your heads, close your eyes, fold your hands. Dear God, thank you that you make promises to us, covenants, and that you keep your promises. We pray, Lord, that you will give us soft hearts towards you, that to always love you and to worship you and obey you. Amen. Well, kids, have a great week. We will see you next week. Until then, be safe, be well, and remember God loves you always. Bye now. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. Because He first loved me.
time.